Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat while I tell you about Yamatai by Days of Wonder, a game about fleets of resources and building palaces to prove yourself the best builder of them all. The way this works is that each round in the turn order given on this track here, you will select a fleet. The fleet token you choose will have three effects. Firstly, the number on it will be what is used to determine turn order for the coming round. Secondly, the ships on it are the ships of resources that you will get. Each colour is a different type of resource, and some colours are rarer than others. You will potentially also get a special ability, and each of the special abilities is different on all the tiles, though the number one tile does not have a special ability. Its special ability is that you're guaranteed to go first in the next round. Once you've taken this, you'll sit it beside you, along with your meeple, until the end of the round. You then carry on with your turn. The next thing you do is you trade. Trading, you can sell or buy these different colours of ship. The rarer they are, the more they cost. Then once you've done that, you take all the ships you've bought or have left from your fleet, and then you place them on this beautiful, beautiful board here. Where you place them? then dictates what you do next. So as you place these out, you then have two choices. Firstly, you can take culture tokens from the islands next to the fleets that you just put out. You can take one culture token for each fleet. And I'll explain what these are used for in a minute. Alternatively, if there is no culture token on that island that you have just placed ships around, you may build. If the available buildings, you have the correct fleet ships around. So the different types of buildings need different types of resources around them. They need different supplies. If you meet the criteria, you can do that and you take the building tile and that will give you points. Building tiles are one of the main ways to get points in this game. Another way to get points is just by having money at the end of the game, though that's much less efficient. Once you've decided whether you're building or taking culture tokens, you can then optionally hire one of these specialists from the top of the board here. And again, these are another way of gaining points. Some will just give you points in the corner here, but they will also give you special abilities. And some of these special abilities will give you points or give you ways to gain points or increase your points from building and other things. The way you hire these specialists is any of these culture tokens that you've picked up, if you've got two of a kind, you can trade those in to hire a specialist, or if you have three of any kind, you can do the same. Then it's the end of your turn, and play proceeds to the next player on the turn track, who will do the same, who will do the same, who will do the same, until eventually you come to the end of the round, at which point you'll have fewer of these fleet things here, and you move these down, and then you reveal the new ones that will be the new options you have. You see, there are ten total fleet tokens, but you're only ever going to use a maximum of four. In a free player game, you're only going to be using three each time, so two are going to stay and you get three new ones. The order of these that you then collect up for all the different players, putting their meeples on the appropriate number for the appropriate tile, you then shuffle these all up, place them out on your board randomly, face down, ready to reveal after the next round if they move down into there. the end of the game, whoever has the most points is the best builder and has pleased Queen Hamiko and wins the game. So that is how you play Yamatai. What do I think of the game? Well, let's start with the artwork. The artwork is absolutely fabulous. Just look at the board set out here. It's gorgeous. It's simple. It's there's nice little details in there, but it's just, it's bright, it's vibrant, it's attractive, it has a lovely presence on the table. The artwork on the specialists is just gorgeous of these characters. It is just so well done. All the art in this is fantastic, and I love the visual appeal of this game. So, component-wise, again, this 
is a Days of Wonder game. They're renowned for the good visuals, good components, and just in general good accessible games. And component-wise as well, they've done the typical Days of Wonder. You've got these lovely wooden pieces, you know, you've got your own personal buildings, you've got the special buildings, you've got the ships. They are lovely. The tokens and cards and tiles, everything in this is just top-notch component quality. So what then about the gameplay? Well, this is an interesting game, gameplay-wise, because there are a lot of elements taken from other games, really, that have been present in other games, but they've combined them in a new and interesting way, I think. The whole idea of the way that you gain resources in this is by building these trade routes with the ships is interesting. It's also interesting that you have to have the right type of ships. So if you want to carry on a trade route, you need to have at least one matching colour to do that of the existing trade route. And that's really quite interesting and it just creates this incredibly puzzly game as you try and work your way through it. And that is the thing about this game. The rules are quick, they are simple, they are easy to pick up and learn. It is easy for people to understand what they need to do. However, they are then presented with lots of choices. That is what this game gives you, tons and tons of choice. And I think choice is fantastic in a game. But it can be too much for some people. The whole analysis paralysis, that idea where you just there are so many options of what you could do, that you can't pick one, you don't know what to do, can be an issue for some players in this game. And of course that means when you're playing with four people you've got more chance that you've got players like that. It can cause an issue. But the mechanics are interesting. The way what you have to keep in mind, what you do is going to help other people. As you place ships out, other people can take advantage of those ships launching off of them for their own trade routes but also using those for buildings because the other thing is as you take culture tokens yes you're taking these they will help you get specialists but then you're clearing an island that you've just put these fleets around that then someone else can use a building so it's very much a balancing the most efficient turn you can have with the most efficient turn someone else can have and what stops it just being about a kind of stalemate of, well, you went first, you've got to take culture tokens, then I get to go, and then I get to build a building type thing, is that, one, you might not have the fleet you need in order to do that building, but two is the specialists. You see, the specialists might seem like a lesser addition and a pointless addition to this game when the key to winning is just building and if you have the best buildings you will win. But the specialists create combos. They, if you get the right specialists, if you get the right chain going, you can get big points. These are just going to enhance your gameplay. They might give you more options, more versatility, more able to cope with what other people are doing, more able to manipulate things. And then there's also the powers on these fleet tiles, because the higher the fleet tile, the better the fleets you're going to get, and potentially the better the power, but then you're sacrificing being able to go first next time. And it could be quite powerful to go last and then go first, because you can safely kill a, clear a tile knowing you'll be the first person able to build on it next time. So there, this game is really interesting. I really, really do enjoy this game. Now, with regards to replay value on this game, because of the randomised setup of the culture tokens, the specialists, the buildings, there is quite a lot of replay value in this game. I will say I've played it seven, eight times now, and I'm still really enjoying it. I'm not bored by this game at all. It's not feeling the same each time we play. You know, the places that buildings get put, how they get put out is different. The combinations of specialists you end up with is different. So that is good. However, I think if you get to 20, 30, maybe even up to 40 plays, 
it could do with a little spicing up. But let's face it, it's going to take a year or so, and they'll probably have an expansion by that point come out that will do that job. The next thing I want to talk about is the scaling on this game. So I spoke before about how if you have up to four players, then you could have an issue with analysis paralysis, or more likely to have an issue with analysis paralysis. Even if you've not got people with that issue, if you play with four players, you can go first one round and then last the next round. That's six whole player turns that you're just sat out, which is a big problem. And it also means that you can't really plan ahead on your turn because so much will be happening that you can't even be sat there going, OK, so if they do that, I can do this or there'll be that left because six turns the entire board is going to change. OK, towards the end of that, you can start then thinking about your turn and planning it out. But yeah. And by that point, because you've gone last, you're probably left with not much choice on the <laughs> fleet tiles. And so you have kind of a bad turn, a good turn, a bad turn, a good turn. And it might well be first one round, then last the next, because you're trying to counteract the badness. It can seesaw like that and cause a big downtime issue even without analysis paralysis so with regards to scaling four is not ideal on this game three seems to be quite a good level it's much more balanced with regards to maximum you're going to have four turns that you're sat there not doing anything and also it means that with the size of the board not changing based on the number of players there's a good amount of blocking each other off and getting in each other's way a good amount of different powers coming out and fighting over these powers which i think is very interesting and very nice two players i think though is the best number to play this with and the reason for that is that you can, when you're choosing these tiles, be kind of planning out, OK, well, I can chain so that I get four turns in a row or three turns in a row or at the very least two turns in a row. You can kind of work to make that happen. You can kind of set up your turns. You can be going, right, I'll do that to be able to do that to be able to do that. And you've got to think, oh, well, if I do that with my first action, then I will clear the tile and I can do this. So at the same time, that then takes away from the aspect of everything you do, you've got the risk that you're helping others because you can set it up so that you don't have to do that all the time. And in fact, you don't have to do it a lot of the time. So, yeah, every play mode has their little niggling things, every player number. No game is perfect, but for me, I think this is an incredibly enjoyable game. I especially like it at two players. I think the whole head-to-head -head works fantastically well. I think it's hard to play this game for me, and I think for a lot of other people as well, without comparing it to Five Tribes. There are a few reasons for this. Firstly, same publisher, same designer, so that's going to have a big impact on them being quite similar games. The other thing is that there are a lot of things similar. These specialists, for example, are like the genies in Five Tribes. In Five Tribes, what you do, you might set up moves for other people. Same thing going on here. The way the turn order track works and being able to set up moves is similar, though different, because you don't have that bidding aspect. It's all about the action selection. And I think... That action selection is probably the best thing about this game and what makes it stand out most compared to Five Tribes. The other thing is that in Five Tribes you start with this big board with tons and tons and tons of options. Everywhere is an option for what you can do in Five Tribes when you start the game. And as the game goes on and meeples get removed and places get claimed, the options narrow. And it becomes a quicker game towards the end and uh, easier to make your decisions. Whereas that huge open beginning in Five Tribes can be really daunting, especially for new players. Whereas this is just kind of a bit daunting with the level of choices throughout the whole game. So that is an interesting thing. It's much more in this you feel like you're very much 
building towards something. You are building this beautiful city sprawling across these islands. And five tribes, you're kind of doing the opposite as you kind of take away the desert. You're taking away the meeples, but at the same time still building up your goals towards winning. It is a game that I think people who enjoy Five Tribes will enjoy this game. They'll appreciate that level of decision making. They'll appreciate the fact that you can potentially help other people, that you can set yourself up, that you can create combos with the specialists in the same way that you would with the genies. Overall, I think this is a fantastic game. It is going to be staying in my collection. I think Yamatai, as I say, it's not going to be a gateway game. A lot of Days of Wonders games, like last year they came out with Quadropolis, are very light gateway games. This I would not recommend to new gamers. It's very much what I would class as a light to midweight game with regards to the level of strategy and choices involved. With regards to gameplay, yes, a new gameplay a new person to gaming would be able to play because the gameplay is that simple. It's that easy to understand. But I just don't think they would enjoy it as much. They would be overwhelmed by the choices going on. I think this is much more someone who's been gaming for a while and wants to get their teeth into something a little meatier, a little grittier. This is a lovely game to do it. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. It's fun. That is Yamatai by Days of Wonder. I do hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing and sharing the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.